is a software that connects an iPhone to a personal computer. We're now going to use it so that the uniform rotation can be studied. Can be studied within the framework of lectures called everywhere basic mechanic, using then concepts such as frames, vectors, acceleration vector, velocity vector, polar coordinate, and kinetic energy. The point here is to represent all the data transferred real-time by the iPhone sensors embedded to the personal computer using the tools we used to as teachers in basic mechanics. So, in order to ensure that we have a uniform rotation, the easiest way to do it is to use a turntable that is here. And the turntable also is nicely used so that we can work either with a 33 number of rotation per minute or, of course, 45. So this is what we're now going to do. And now we're going to focus on the screen here so that we can follow all the representation we're using that are really what we do when we teach basic mechanics. So the first thing is that here we show the orientation of the iPhone as it is rotating onto the turntable. So for the sensors, essentially what the, the iPhone is doing is that you do one rotation during the time the turntable is doing one period. That's the first thing. Here two frames are presented. One is fixed with long arrows, that's the lab frame, X, Y, and Z. And you also have a frame that's attached to the iPhone. It's called X iPhone, Y iPhone, and Z iPhone. So that's the first thing. And then you can work with these vectors and, and frames so that you can describe orientation space of the iPhone. Of course, the second thing you can, the second thing you can do is that you can now follow the vectors associated to the movement, to the displacement of the iPhone. So you're very much interested by velocity vector and acceleration vector. Both are there. So here we describe these two vectors that are the acceleration vector of the iPhone and the velocity vectors of the iPhone in real time in the lab frame. So X and Y are the vectors of the lab frame, they're not moving at all. U and M are the vectors associated to polar coordinate, and they're of course rotating as you expect. You immediately identify that the acceleration vector is opposed to U, but that's difficult to see it here as everything is rotating. So in order to now analyze orientations of acceleration vector and velocity vector, also the land and how that can be changed, then we move to a rotating frame. That's the frame attached to the iPhone. So we see that now the two vectors, U and N, that are the vectors associated to the polar coordinate and are fixed, of course, because we're in the rotating frame. So we see that now, as expected for uniform rotation, also there is a bit of wobbling, but still it's there. So we see the acceleration vector there opposed to U, as you expected, that doesn't matter if you're, to, if you're turning in, in that direction or in the other one. Velocity vector versus n, that depends on rotation direction. Here it's opposed. You see that both vectors are constant, essentially, in direction and length, as you expect for a uniform rotation, and the angle here is equal to uh, 90 degrees, as also expected. How can we change that? First of all, before changing it, we come to, of course, what we pretty much like here, that is the kinetic energy here, kinetic energy versus the time. It's more or less constant. It can be changed versus the time. Now I move to high speed, and then if I move to high speed, then what I see is that immediately the kinetic energy is increasing. That was 33 rotation per minute, we come to 45 rotation per minute. Also immediately, we see that the acceleration vector is now much longer than it was before, that you can describe, you can save the data and, and study that very carefully. And the velocity vector also is 
the, the length is changed accordingly, but the rotation orientation is still the same, so vectors are all oriented the same. Same thing here, then you see that the rotation is much quicker, but still you have essentially the same orientation, also acceleration vectors and velocity vectors are also longer. So what you have here in four screens is that you have orientation in space, description in the lab frame where you see velocity vector, acceleration vector in polar coordinate. Then you come now to the rotating frame so that you can nicely study what's going on in terms of the length of the vectors and also uh, in terms of orientation compared to U and N that are vector associated to the polar coordinate. Then here we follow the kinetic energy. So we believe that with this presentation in real time, then we have all the necessary tools to describe and to learn what's the uniform rotation. Now I can try to play with my finger and see how I can change the length and the angle and the kinetic energy. And for example, I do that. And I have essentially no kinetic energy left. So that's kind of things you can do. You can play with the speed here once again. And probably during the time he's doing that, then you see that the angle of the acceleration vector is changing because this is no longer a uniform rotation. So I can do that once again. You see angle coming back to 90 degrees again and again. So it means that also you can try change the rotation speed. You can save the data and then offline you can study all the features that have been introduced here using this program. And this is essentially what we wanted to say. Thank you very much. Attends. Euh, laisse le tourner, c'est pas grave. Je vais mettre mes lunettes. Je vais mettre <rire> Gracias.